Hello everyone. Welcome to new IAS Daily Current Affairs program. Today on 3rd January 2019, we will be dealing with the topics Invasive Species, Olive Ridley Turtles, Climate Change Performance Index, Swap Ratio and for the math session we will be dealing with Taiwan and last we have PQRS. So coming to the very first topic that is about invasive species. So an organism called black stripped mussel which is an invasive species is posing threat to the native species in the Kochi backwaters. So the estimated population density of this invasive species in Vembanad Lake which is in Kerala was 748 per square meter. So an invasive species can be any kind of living organism that is not native to an ecosystem and which can cause harm to that ecosystem. So they can harm the environment, economy or even the human health. So these kind of species are known as invasive species. Talking about black strip mussel, so these are an invasive biofouling bivalve species. So bivalve is a class of marine or marine and freshwater mollusk that have laterally compressed bodies enclosed by a shell consisting of two hinged parts. That's the definition. It is nothing but it has a, the species which has a compressed body enclosed within a shell that is known as bivalve. So bivalve as a group they do not have a head. These include clams, oysters, cockles, mollusks etc. So these species they are native to tropical and subtropical waters of western Atlantic which extends from Colombia to the Gulf of Mexico. So these are native to Western Atlantic but it has reached West Africa, Japan and Indian subcontinent by getting attached to the hull of ships and ballast water. So this way they reach the Indian subcontinent also. So this species is believed to have invaded Indian waters through Vishagapatnam Harbour in the 1960s and it was reported to be found in Mumbai Harbour in 1975 also. So the major threats posed by this species include that it is not edible and it is considered as a serious pest because of its ability to rapidly establish huge populations and cause significant environmental impact. So it is not even edible and it can spread rapidly causing a threat to the ecosystem and environment. So this uh, muscle uh, they demonstrate high fecundity rate and early maturity. So what is meant by fecundity? So it is the potential for reproduction of an organism or population. So this muscle has got high reproduction potential and uh, this uh, species has also got high tolerance to wide range of temperature, salinity, oxygen. So it is causing a high risk of invasion in the coastal waters. So it can reproduce in a wide range of temperature from uh, around 10 to 35 degrees Celsius. So this species can tolerate wide range of temperature, salinity and oxygen. All right. So I said these are uh, invasive biofowlers. So what are these biofowlers? They are organisms that can accumulate underwater on hard surface. So if you have seen these muscles and all, they, they will stick on to the rock surface and all. So it, uh, these are known as biofowlers. Biofowlers is nothing but it is the accumulation of microorganisms or plants, algae or animals on the wetted surface. So these muscles they are also biofowlers and also bivalve. Alright. So our next topic is about olive ridley turtles. Many of the olive ridley turtles which choose Andhra Pradesh coast for their annual breeding are dying before they reach the destination after they being trapped in the fishing nets. 
so the primary reason for the rise in death of olive ridley turtles is the absence of turtle excluder device so because of the absence of turtle excluder device uh, there was an increase in the death of olive ridley turtles and the wildlife authorities have identified about 12 strategic locations to set up the rookeries between the Krishna and Koringa wildlife sanctuary. So talking about olive ridley turtles, they are the smallest and most abundant of all sea turtles found in the world. So they are found in the tropical warm waters of the Pacific and Indian Ocean. All right. They are classified as vulnerable under the IUCN rate list. So I think uh, like uh, many get confused about the IUCN status. It is only vulnerable species and olives are best known for their unique mass nesting which is known as Aribada. So where Aribada it is a unique kind of mass nesting where thousands of female olive ridley turtles come together on the same beach to lay eggs. All right, that is known as Aribada. And uh, the coast of Odisha in India is the largest mass nesting site for the olive ridley turtles. So what are the major threats to the olive ridley turtles? Uh, the major threat include the entanglement in trawl nets and gill nets due to the uncontrolled fishing. And uh, some other threats include uh, like general threats like uh, wildlife trade, poaching, climate change, pollution, habitat loss, all these are threats to this species. And so I said the conservationist has identified around 12 strategic points to set up the rookeries between Koringa and Krishna wildlife sanctuary. So we'll just uh, see about uh, Koringa and Krishna wildlife sanctuary. So Koringa wildlife sanctuary is located in Andhra Pradesh and it is the second largest stretch of mangrove forest in India. All right. It is the second largest stretch of mangrove forest in India and it is home to critically endangered white backed vulture and the long built vulture. And about Krishna wildlife sanctuary. So it is a wildlife sanctuary and an estuary located in Andhra Pradesh and it is one of the rarest eco regions of the world because it harbors vast tracts of pristine mangrove forest all right so we come to the next topic that is about climate change performance index so this was in news because morocco has been named the second best performing country after sweden in the climate change performance index so it is an index so this index is an instrument designed to enhance transparency in international climate politics its aim is to put political and social pressure on those countries that have failed to take ambitious action on climate protection. And this index is uh, published by German Watch, Can International and New Climate Institute. Uh, these organizations together release this index and it evaluates climate protection and performance of 56 countries and the European Union. So, uh, a country's aggregate performance is calculated by 14 indicators within four categories and these four categories are greenhouse gas emissions, renewable energy, energy use and climate policy. So, these are the four categories under which there are 14 indicators which is used to calculate a country's aggregate performance on the uh, climate protection. All right. So we will come to next topic that is about swap ratio. The union cabinet, they have approved the three-way merger of Vijaya Bank, Dena Bank with Bank of Baroda and banks announced share swap ratio for the transaction. So that is the news. So this scheme, it will come into force on April 1. And uh, this, amalgamation, this amalgamation will be the first ever three-way consolidation of banks in India. The amalgamated entity um, emerging as the country's second largest public sector bank. All right. So this, amal this amalgamated entity will emerge as the country's second largest public sector bank. So Vijaya Bank and Dena Bank are the transferred banks and Bank of Baroda will be the 
transferi bank and uh, the share swap ratio will be set by bank of baroda and it is said that it will hurt the dena bank investors the most as they will stand to lose about uh, rupees 4.8 per share followed by vijaya bank shareholders they will uh, lose around rupees 3 per share and what is the swap ratio swap ratio is an exchange ratio which is used in case of mergers and acquisition so this is the ratio in which the acquiring company offers its own shares in exchange for the target company's shares all right it is the ratio in which the acquiring company offers its own shares in exchange for the target company's shares so to calculate the swap ratio companies analyze financial ratios such as book value then earning per share profit after tax as well as um, other factors like size of the company long term debts all these are included in the calculation of swap ratio and the swap ratio will be calculated by bank of baroda all right so next we'll come to map aided program and today we'll be seeing taiwan so in this figure you can see this big country it is uh, china and uh, you can see a small country near to that that is taiwan and the chinese president has called for a peaceful reunification to taiwan china still sees democratic taiwan as a part of its territory to be reunified despite the two sides being ruled separately since the end of a civil war in 1949 so now even now china want uh, reunification with taiwan and talking about taiwan it is officially known as republic of china and it is a state in east asia so taiwan was formerly known as formosa all right it was known as formosa and uh, the major neighbors of taiwan that uh, include to the west it is uh, china that is a uh, people's republic of china and to the northeast it is japan and uh, philippines to the south all right these are the neighbors of taiwan and china has also proposed adopting the one country two system policy all right it is one country two system policy to accommodate differences in taiwan's political system and civil society it is one country two system policy like uh, you can add this in your mains answers and all that's it now we come to prelims question revision series pqrs so which uh, which one of the following is the national aquatic animal of india salt water crocodile olive ridley turtle gangetic dolphin and gharial these are the options so it is a question from 2015 prelims so this is a really direct question if you know the answer you can directly move to the option else uh, I either you have to take a guesswork and it's just uh, like kind of risk. Better it is to leave if you don't know the answer. And the answer for this question is Gangetic River Dolphin. So the Ganges River Dolphin are recognized by the government of India as its national aquatic animal. And uh, Ganges River Dolphin is also the official animal of the Indian city of Guwahati. And uh, these. a uh, river dolphin are said to re represent the purity of the holy ganga as it can only survive in pure and fresh water so gangetic river dolphin can survive only in fresh water so that uh, it is said to represent the purity of holy ganga and this river dolphin they lack a lens and therefore they can function solely as a means of detecting the direction of light so because of that these are also known as blind river dolphin all right and these are known as uh, locally known as susu because of the noise it makes while breathing so it has got different names gangetic river dolphin blind river dolphin susu all these are names of the same species and it inhabits parts of the ganges Meghna and Brahmaputra rivers in India, Nepal, Bhutan, and Bangladesh, and also the Karnapoli River in Bangladesh. These are the sites which 
that uh, this uh, Gangetic River dolphin inhabits and it is listed as endangered in the IUCN Red List and it is categorized under Schedule 1 for the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. These are the few details about Gangetic River dolphin and it is the National Aquatic Animal of India. So that's it for today and with that we wind up today's session. You can download the daily current affairs material from the link given below. Thank you for watching.